Just because you like SE knives and you can't get enough of MagnaCut doesn't mean that the SE knives Sincello is the right blade for you. And so I'm looking forward to sharing with you my findings on the first production run of the MagnaCut version of this new compact SE. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Aaron, this is Gideon's Tactical. Let's go ahead and dive on in. And we are truly gonna have a blast with this knife today because not only are we gonna really unpack an SE, we just haven't had, we haven't had SEs on the Blade Bootcamp here for a while. Just because I think that their designs, they really try to hone, they don't release as many every year as a lot of other companies trying to really make the, the design right versus just like throwing it out there and see if people buy it. So most of the time they're bangers. We'll find out if the Sencio, I believe is how SE is pronouncing it. I would say Sencillo but I, I'm watching videos and their guys say Sincillo. So, okay, I'll go with that. Model in MagnaCut, and there is an A2 version as well that will be a little bit more inexpensive. We'll talk about steels and all that other stuff. I got some awesome competitive options that we're really gonna find out if this little guy is worth having as a companion or if there's some competitive options that might be better suited for your knees. We're gonna find out today. And we're actually gonna begin with the sheath because compact fixed blades, I think almost more than any other fixed blade have gotta have an epic sheath. That, those sheath has to be dialed in. And I would give this a solid seven out of 10. I've had better. It's not the worst. I've had better Kydex sheaths. Here's what I mean. First off, the tension ain't great. It's pretty, slaps around in there quite a bit. There's definitely, you can feel the play kind of rattling around in there. Obviously they went with pancake design, which means the footprint is quite large in comparison to one that we'll be looking at a little bit later. Here's a Boker. You can see there's a taco that slims down like an inch um, in that design. So th that just means like, depending on how you carry it, for most situations, it's fine, but it's just a wide footprint, lots of lashing points, no tension screw or anything to kind of like dial in the tension. You can maybe work one in right here. Um, you know, you could do a Chicago screw like that and try and, you know, maybe tighten it up ever so slightly. Good thumb ramp, good, you know, removal right there. Snaps back into place. Going to come with a very basic, large Kydex fold over that you could unscrew and then run horizontal as well. So not mind blowing, you know, it's fine. Uh, you could do blade tech locks, molly locks. So it's okay, but it's pretty big footprint and not, you know, like epic tension or options and like dialing in the tension. There are going to be some options that we're going to look at that just have a better Kydex sheath. Now, as we get to blade performance and steel, both MagnaCut versus A2 and discuss that, I do want to take just a brief moment to thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I do invite you, if you haven't yet subscribed, to consider hitting that subscription button. Make sure to hit the bell icon so you can be notified every week when I break down gear and equipment like this, as well as hitting that like button. And it's truly you guys in partnership with our sponsors that help me buy blades just like this, test them out, give you guys highlights, show you pros, cons, and help you to better determine whether or not these tools are right for you. And today's sponsor, I just wanna give a quick shout out to, is Zolio and their satellite communication device that I have been trusting for years now on all of my outdoor adventures. And this Zolio has proved to be an essential piece of kit as I have explored some of the most beautiful but rugged and isolated terrain North America has to offer. And it's proved its value time and time again because it gives my wife and I the confidence to be able to communicate back and forth when I'm out exploring. She's been able to alert me to emergencies and situations that have occurred back at home. And because we are communicating over the Iridium satellite network, I know I can communicate back to her when plans change or trouble arises on my end. And most importantly, if there's an emergency situation, I can hit the SOS button and immediately start communicating with first responders and get medical attention for myself or people in my party while sharing my GPS coordinates with those first responders. And that's just scratching the surface of what the features and capabilities of this device have. So I'm gonna have a link in the description box below over to the Zolio website where you can unpack and just see all the capabilities, all the different features, as well as the subscription plans. And I will also have my exclusive promo code, which will waive the $40 activation fee. So check them out and give yourself and your loved ones some peace of mind as you go exploring the great outdoors. Now about that steel, obviously MagnaCut has tons of desirability right now, but A2 steel is nothing to balk at. It is a good, tough, high carbon steel. Uh, it's got good wear resistance, good durability. Now it is high carbon, so you're gonna have to keep an eye on it and you know make sure that it's not gonna rust on you. Whereas MagnaCut has excellent corrosion resistance, has good wear resistance. I found that it has better wear resistance than S35 VN. Uh, and I found that without much difficulty, it is easy to resharpen, even with this field sharpener. 
out in the field, magnet cut on several of my blades. I have done that. That's the work sharp field sharpener. I'll have a link in the description below. I know a lot of you guys are curious about that. And you know, maintenance in the field is key. So I can do that with magnet cut. Now it won't have the wear resistance that like M390 and 20CV has. Those will have better wear resistance, obviously tougher to resharpen in the field. Um, but this will have almost double the durability of those type of steels magnet cut will. So that's why everyone's like, Ooh, ah, you know, I don't know what the Rockwell is that SE is doing. I mean, they've always done excellent with whatever steel from my experience they're using. So if anyone knows, throw a comment down below, but I've had good edge retention, good wear resistance and everything that I've been using how, since I've been using this blade. Now, what we're looking at from handle to tip is three and a half inches. Cutting edge is about 3.3 on an eighth of an inch thick stock back here that slowly tapers to a precise tip. That tip is built for precision. It is not built for prying. So do not be trying to like dig a nail out of a piece of wood with this thing. You will most likely snap and break that. Thankfully, SE has a mind blowing warranty, but you know, treat your tools as they should get a crowbar, get in, get something. I'll even use a piece of wood or, you know, a rock before I'd use the tip of my nice blade. So obviously a huge, broad, full flat grind means that slicing is the name of the game with this blade. That's what its intended purpose is. And I just saw it. It was dreamy when it comes to slicing through man-made materials like cardboard, uh, just eating that stuff up, cordage, rope, even going through a 7,000 pound rated toe strap, I was able to, with a cut, basically go through that entire thing. That was pretty impressive um, doing that. So I was really pleased with the edge geometry for all that. Obviously food prep, this is like a little kitchen knife basically. So food prep would be ideal, particularly if you're gonna do a lot of that, Magnica is probably the better solution. So you're not worried about just the metallic feel that carbon steels give you in the mouth with your, in the mouth, with <laughs> uh, uh, food. You know, you can just have that, you feel that kind of like metal taste sometimes with carbons, um, whereas stainless, you don't experience that as much. Lost my train of thought there. Carving, uh, when it comes to soft wood and manipulating the wood, because of how wide the belly is and the, ba the back of the spine, you can just get in there, really get a notch well, fillet wood very easily, skin it down and make it just work to your needs. If it's soft wood is what I found. We're gonna get to the, where I kind of saw some issues with hardwood here in a moment. Um, batoning, you know, it's such a high thin grind. I would not be trying to slam this through a bunch of knots, not because Magnet Cut probably couldn't handle it depending on the thick Thickness. It's just, it's got such a thin edge that you may get some waves if you were going through like crazy knots. Now I did some light batoning, no issues through like pine, you know, no problem as long as you can span it. But I mean, I wouldn't be going through a knotted piece of hickory with this blade. I, I could damage the blade and just, I've seen that on multiple types of steel depending on what you're doing. So in that regard, now the area where I was kind of surprised and I'm finding that it's not so much the edge or anything, it's the grind geometry of a high full flat grind on a very thin stock. It is somewhat difficult, not only with this model, but others I've used lately to get a good feather stick. I'm gonna have to work at it here. In a way I do not have to do with that other one. I'm getting it, but it's not just like organic to do it. Huh, it's so interesting, I can get it. Okay. So there's that again. Here's a thicker saber grind, same piece of wood. Just hack this off. Yeah, you guys can see there, it's just like a lot more organic and I'm not even like, I'm going a lot faster. I'm not having to think about it and like control the knife quite like I was before. Interesting. As you saw there, it, it's a lot of effort. You really have to think, work it, find the perfect edge. Otherwise you slide off because it's just such a steep geometry. Whereas with that lion steel I was using with a saber grind at 0 0.16, much thicker, I, I didn't even have to think about it. It wasn't an effort to make curls like it was with this blade. I've had the same experience with some full flat grind Montana knife companies as well that are very, very thin. Uh, where it's just difficult to get feather stick. So if you're looking for like this to be a feather stick monster, from my experience, my mileage, your mileage may vary, I was not super impressed and this wouldn't be the first tool I would use. I would look for a thicker, slightly saber ground blade if you're just like fuzz stick king and that's what you wanna do. The other aspect is just blade shape. Because of that massive belly and that tip, you've almost gotta go almost backwards to pierce properly and get like tip action for cutting. Um, I ought to be honest, it's a little broad for me. I would have liked to have maybe this choiled part cut in half and brought in just a little bit, a little less belly would have given us a little more precision tip and a little bit, 
I don't know. To me, and that's my personality, I would have preferred this portion to be cut like in half and about, I don't know, a half an inch removed from the width of the blade would have been my preference. That's me, that's my mileage. Your mileage may vary. On to the ergonomics. We have an excellent burlap micarta bean kind of shape, bug shaped right there. Three screws, excellent. Nice large lanyard hole, very organic. No sharp angles anywhere on it. Now let's get the measurement here real quick. From the guard to the end, we're looking at four inches even and the scale themselves are three and a half. So, and I believe it's like 0 0.7 on the maximum thickness and then kind of tapers front and back. Really locking my large size hands into place. Plenty of real estate. Didn't feel, didn't create a hot spot ever, even though it's kind of tapering on the neck and you're super locked in. You're never going to slide up and like hurt yourself, even in a reverse grip. Bam. You're really locked into place, particularly if you like put your thumb there, just give a little bit of leverage. That impact will hurt because of how thin it is. But so handle ergonomics, I don't really have any complaints with this type of a knife. It gives you a lot of grip points and just really feels warm and good to the touch. It's not blocky or anything like that, like old SEs from years gone by. So now it's like the moment of truth. How does this knife stack up? Where's value? Those type of things. Let me get that out of the way there. Uh, and just size perspectives, things like that. Now, I paid 170, I believe, at Blade HQ for the Magna Cut version, um, and then I believe the A2 version is like 155. So, uh, for Magna Cut in 2024, wow, it's 2024 now, almost at 2023. Um, that is an excellent value. It was one of the best values. SE is always good at that. You know, 100% American made, their lifetime warranty, all that stuff. That is extremely like worthwhile, good, good, good value, regardless if it's the A2 version or it's the Magna Cut version. So that right out of the gate is excellent. I will have links in the description box below, not only for this model, but the competitive options we're running in to Blade HQ as well as all the other distributors, including uh, really excited that we just started partnering with DLT Trading as well. So those will be linked below um, and now they're part of our affiliate network. So that's a really exciting announcement. So depending on where you wanna pick up your favorite blade, we got lots of options. Now, now the first one I actually want to run in is kind of like the opposite in a lot of ways. Made in Germany, this is the Boker Bronco Mini. Just picked this up, just started carrying it, messing around with it, full tank construction, rubberized handle, uh, nice sharpened spine there, tw uh, 80 CRV2 steel. I really like 80 CRV2. I've really started using it this year and it's been a joy. And I think in the past year, sorry, that's not right. Uh, we're looking at like right on, yeah, basically like 3.4 inches overall, maybe 3.3 cutting edge. And I don't actually know the stock thickness. I paid like $104 on DLT trading. Yeah, 0 0.13. So like just a hair thicker on a saber grind. And that's what I'm going to get at. For feather stick making, this is much easier. This is a much easier tool to use. Um, ADCR V2 is a carbon, so much closer to like the A2 variant model. And this is not like their Boker Plus that's made over in China. This is made in Germany. And it is going to have that taco design Kydex sheath, good tension, locks me, snaps me into place with that tang coming out the back there. So that is a good, very viable option um, is the Mini Bronco if you're into that. Now, one blade that I thought of right away also is the Buck Knives Alpha Pro Series. And this is the, what is this? The 664. That's three and a half inches, right around the same cutting edge, just a little bit longer. This, you can get wood or rich light, really like rich light handle material. Similar size range, S35VN though. And this is actually gonna cost you more. I think these are like between 190 and 200 currently. They are coming out with the Magna Cut version. I'll be very curious to see where that version comes in at. Leather sheath. Well built, USA made, USA made, everything. Um, and this one definitely more of kind of like a hunting, but that's gonna again have that high flat grind, basically a saber grind, a little bit more piercing tip. Uh, nice indexing control right there. Great EDC knife or woodscraft or hunting knife as well. I really do like this. And again, the edge geometry is just going to be slightly better for certain woods crafting tasks, even though again, this will out slice it. So now having seen that, how do, how do I feel about the knife overall? I prefer a more aggressive tip stance. And in most scenarios that I'm gonna carry a compact fixed blade like this, 
I, having seen now on this and on the Montana Knife Company version, uh, because of how thin those stocks are, just not being great with feather sticks and some other types of cutting, I think in most scenarios, I'm gonna gravitate to this type of blade shape and a saber grind over, still wanting it thin, you know, like an eighth of an inch. So I would just say like, if you were to ask me, hey dude, you have, we have all four of these to choose from, would I choose the SE first? Unless we're basically gonna do the camp kitchen, I'm gonna probably go with one of these. But I wanna know from you guys, that's me and my mileage, how does the Sencio stack up for you, particularly if you own one, how has it been performing? Do you like the full flat grind, thin stock, the feather stick situation isn't that big an issue to you? Um, and between the two steels, A2 and MagnaCut, which one kind of would you gravitate to more? I always appreciate your guys' feedback, your comments. I do invite you to, again, check out the other video popping up and to consider subscribing. And until next time, guys, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.